and welcome to the Old Golden Black with me, Tom Raz. I'm joined today by Gulraj Kula, writer of Molyneux Musings and also the Channel 5 Wolves correspondent, if that's, uh, <laughs> if that's something you want to be called as well. So today, Ipswich at home, are we going to see one of your characters again, Mr Championship? Um, I think Mick McCarthy is kind of the epitome of that character, I would suggest. Um, I mean, we all know what Mick's all about. It's very much, especially in the circumstances he's in where... He hasn't necessarily got the budget to work with. He will turn around and be quite, I'd say, unashamed of defensive football, maybe just tightening things up. And coming for a point, we, we've, we've been here before where he likes to pick and choose the games that he really likes to go for. So case in point being that famous game at Man United where he made 10 changes and the next game we went and won. So to a certain extent, it's justified. But... If he takes that approach, top of the league, not too many uh, teams are going to come here and take points, then we could be in for a bit of a, a drab game. But it's on us to actually sort of take you know, charge of the game. And interestingly enough, from what I've heard, Nuno's teams previously at Porto struggled in these kind of games when it came to opening teams up who were sitting deep, as against Sunderland we found out. So yeah, I mean... He's found solutions to every problem we face so far this season, really. So yeah. it'll be interesting to see what happens. Yeah. I see. I think because we're so defensively minded as a team, anyway, it's difficult when a team comes and sits so far back. Like Sunderland didn't press or anything, yeah. so they didn't leave any gaps for us. And I imagine that as the season goes on, lots of teams are going to come I and think, do that now. I think it's it's quite interesting to see how the media portray us compared to the reality of what we are. I think everyone they've been calling us the Man City, the Championship, all that sort of thing. But in real terms. We, ha we we don't don't necessarily dominate possession. We don't have the necessarily the, the free flowing nature of Man City the fluidity. It's a good structure there. First and foremost, Nuno is a defensive coach. I mean, he's formerly a goalkeeper. He loves his clean sheets, mm. and you can see that in the way we play and the nature of the transfer dealings. Obviously, in the summer, built from the back. I don't think that you know the media are necessarily portraying us correctly, which is fine. You know, it doesn't really matter. I think they just but see the results, don't they? They exactly. think, oh, yeah. 2 0, 2 0, 2 0, 3 or yeah. 4, 1, 5 1. They think oh, they must be. Scoring. Even the games where we've scored a lot of goals, we've been very clinical. We haven't created yeah. chance after chance after chance. It's always been a, you know, we, we've been measured in our approach play. We like to get the ball into position where it's almost impossible not to score a goal, I'd mm. say. You know, it's not as if, you know, we're taking shots from all angles and, yeah. and you know, it's, it's very, very well thought out. And one thing I love about the fact. It, that you know you, you can actually see there's a distinct style of play this season yeah. in, in seasons gone by I mean last season who who knows what, what approach we were trying to take it was yeah. very much Mr Championship sort of football I would yeah. say yeah do you think that's something that if we do get promoted we're gonna have to change because for a team that will be in the bottom half of the Premier League you need to make more chances than and be able to score more goals you know we can't be patient like this it, it's not often teams that come up and play football like this and are successful are they I, I, what I'd say is that when teams have come and given us a game, it's played into our hands a little bit. Mm. And I could imagine in the Premier League, that would be the case more often than not. There's a bit more of a swagger and confidence in the players' abilities yeah. to actually beat us. Mm. So therefore, you know, we might have to play on the counter a little bit more, which which suits us down to the ground in real terms with the pace we've got up front, yeah. with with the kind of players that we've got. So I wouldn't necessarily we need to change our say we need to change our approach. Mm. You know, we'd build on a solid sort of back three, back yeah. five, and then take it from there. Okay, mm. good. Uh, so looking back at the season so far, what have been your highlights, the standout moments perhaps? I think, you know, obviously there was the Villa game where we absolutely, for 45 minutes, without really threatening their goal, schooled them. You know, it was, you know, total football, apart, apart from the penalty box part, but then Bonatini came on and you know, gave us that extra bit of presence and, you know, absolutely wiped the floor with them in real terms. Um, I mean, other highlights include Leeds. Leeds is always a big one for me with the sort of family connotations yeah. with it as well. So, you know, Taking them to the cleaners was really enjoyable. Um, you know, I can't remember the last time we scored five in a game. Um, I think it was possibly Forest in 2008 or something like that. Yeah, oh, I, yes, it was exactly. And they were sort of, you know, re reminiscent of that performance in the sense mm. that, you know, we were really clinical, players were on top of the game. And it was another one of them games where, you know, you just didn't see the other team in it yeah. in real time. But yeah. so, unlike big wins in the past, I think we've. In the past, we've come out and scored two or three goals really quickly. Yeah. Whereas that Bolter game, we were just relentless. It was, yeah. I think the last goal was in the 90th minute or something like that. Yep. So it was just non-stop all the time, which Absolutely, is, yeah. again, the style of play that we're going for. Uh, right, so 
who do you think has been the sign-in of the season? Because I think that we signed about seven or eight first-team players who've all come in and made it, except for Phil Afosuwe, yeah, who yeah, we've yeah. never seen. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we ever will. <laughs> uh, but who's impressed you the most? I would say, I mean, it depends on how you, you sort of measure these things. It, based on sort of pound for pound, Neves is obviously, you know, I wouldn't say you expect a 15 million power player to sort of perform to a certain level, yeah. but... He's worth every every penny he's, he's we spent on him. Um, Jota again is is like a cut above the championship, and hopefully we'll make that signing permanent in the summer. But I'd say the two uh, top signings pound for pound have been Willie Body, um, absolutely transformed that defence. I've never seen a defender so comfortable at this level since Julian Lescott. He, he's just an absolute. He's a Rolls Royce of a defender. He, he never looks flustered at any point, and. The other one is Barry Douglas as well, who came in relatively unknown and has become, you know, an absolute mainstay for us. So, you know, you, you can't really argue with his contribution either. Uh, do you think that, well, the way that Nuno's improved the players that we've already got as well, is as if we've had another three or four signs with Conor Cody, the way Conor Cody's transformed as well. And uh, like or even Danny Bart, what we've seen of him so far this season, he's a different player to what he was, isn't he? Yeah, and I think that's it's an undervalued part of football these days. Everyone thinks you need new signings to come and improve a team, but nothing like good old coaching. We've seen it with Pep Guardiola, yeah. with the way he's what he's done with Raheem Sterling. It's there's nothing wrong with actually taking a player, looking at the weaknesses in his game, and actually improving them. And Nuno's proved that with you know seeing different qualities in players. I think Matt Doherty is another one absolutely yeah. ready-made for that role as a wing back. So as much as we might need a bit of cover. I don't think if we signed a right wing back in January, they'd play much. No. I don't think they would because he's, he's not missed a minute this season. He doesn't look like he's floundering in any way. There's no real fatigue setting in. So, you know, he, he's another one who come on leaps and bounds. And the only thing with him is getting a, an international recognition, yeah. which it's a shame because when he wasn't playing well, Seamus Coleman was there. When he has played well, he hasn't really been you know, part of the fold because of the Seamus Coleman thing. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's been quite unfortunate for him there. Right, I've been called negative quite a few times this season because I've suggested things the Wolves could improve on. Okay. But to me, there's never been a perfect football team. Even if you take Guardiola's Barcelona in 2012, they still conceded a goal in that Champions League final. So yep. it's not perfect. So what do you think Wolves need to do to improve even further this uh, the rest of this season and then further on than that? I think, going back to the point we made about not opening up teams that sit deep. I think that we, we could be a bit cuter uh, in the way we build up play. I think what we saw at the Sun, in the Sunderland game was it was very much a kind of that measured approach that we like to take to going forward wasn't there. You know, we, we sort of hit a brick wall and we were stumped. Uh, you know, some of the, the passing wasn't there. You know, the ideas to actually break a team down. Because what we've had, fortunately, is set pieces, first goal, we've been able to, yeah. you know, score. And teams have to come out, so you know, absolutely perfect for the way we're trying to play. But we're very reliant on the front three that we've got at the moment playing, firing on all cylinders. Yeah. And if they're not quite at it, like has been the case at Sheffield Wednesday, Birmingham, um, Sunderland as well, then you know you've got to find solutions from elsewhere. And obviously, luckily, we have done the Ruben Neves goal, for example. But you know, it, it's something. It's a question to be answered, shall we say? Yeah. Is there any player in particular that you think you would like to bring in? Is there anybody who's impressed you in the championship or I think, further afield? Yeah, I think, I mean, talking about the right wing spot, right wing back spot, spot again, I think Ryan Fredericks um, had a really good game against us uh, for Fulham. Um, again, purely competition for Doc, because he wouldn't necessarily say he's going to absolutely start against him, but he's an option for us. Um, other than that, from the championship... I wouldn't suggest there is any. I mean, strikers-wise, people talk about Jordan Hugel, who I actually think is a better player than he's made out to be. But he's not as cute as Bonatini. No. He's, he's, he's a very different option for us to have, which, to a certain extent, isn't necessarily a bad thing. We could do I, with someone who can feed off crosses, can yeah. you know, can deal with wind jewels in the air and things like that. I so. think we just need something different coming off the bench, yeah. a bit of pace or something. I don't think any Bakari is ready for this level of football yet. He's got the pace, but he hasn't got the final product as we I, saw against Man City. I actually thought against Sunderland Ender Bakari wouldn't have been a bad change to make because he's so unpredictable yeah. you know and he does make mugs of defenders he will beat someone with blink of an eye he's gone past yeah. you so you know it's it's we've got relatively I mean the bench we've had would have walked into any first team we've had in recent yeah. years so in that sense you know maybe we are being a, a bit greedy there yeah. but 
yeah, you're right. We, we could do with something, a bit of a plan B, yeah. Uh, so, think about the second half of the season. Now. Do you think Nuno will fancy a bit of a cup run? We've got Swansea at home. We should, on paper, be winning that sort of game. Do you think he... We saw in the League Cup, he took that quite seriously. Despite resting a lot of players, we still played really well. Do you think that's something he wants to do? Well, I think he's very keen on the idea that every single player in the squad has a role to play and they know exactly what their role is when they come into the team. And we saw that at Man City, especially. Um, so... The cup run might not be at the forefront of his mind, but as a coincidence of just good performances, good players doing their job well, that may happen. You know, I don't think we found out a lot under Mick McCarthy that the cup is never really the focus of a championship manager's. You know, but what's better than winning games of football? Yeah. You, you can't you can't sort of breed confidence without that. So you know, no harm in having a go at anyone. And I think Swansea, we should be absolute favourites for that game. Uh, amazingly enough, I take this team and f fancy it to finish sort of. Top, low, lower mid table yeah. in the in the Premier League right now. Yeah. Uh, now think again. Think about the second half of the season. Any particular away games to stand out for you as tricky ones? Um, I guess it all depends. I mean, the the thing about the second half of the season is, with the Championship especially, people still think that they can make the playoffs or they might be fighting relegation. So there's always going to be something going on. I mean, I remember when Paul Lambert came in last season, we were languishing a little bit, but he still th thought, you know what, we've probably got a chance of making the playoffs, that's my aim here. Yeah. Saunders did, said it, and uh, where, where did we end up with that? So, every game's going to be tricky, we're always going to be there to be shot at. The ones I'd say, you know, more sort of prominent than others, Leeds away, Villa away, um, and coming up very soon, Bristol City away, I think is going to be a very tough game, uh, based on especially what I saw in midweek against Man United so yeah there's there's plenty to think about and the other thing is people will probably see what Sunderland did for them it's not necessarily a bad thing to come with Wolves just take a point and get Wolves out of the way for teams they don't necessarily come, need to come and take three points off us in their quest to yeah. do whatever yeah. they need to do it's only one game for them whereas we will need to keep continually picking up points and uh, the, the importance sort of increases for us yeah. so make a prediction then for May not here in Sunderland the last game of the season what would have happened? I honestly think, um, without trying to sound arrogant, it'll be we'll be home and dry by then. I do think it'll take a team to better our form to get anywhere near us. And I mean, I can't see any other team playing better than us. So if you if you look at the way the position we're at the moment, we could play sort of playoff form, yeah. and we will still walk away with the league. And it needs someone to absolutely go on the kind of run that we've done in the first half of the season just to surpass us so we are sort of champions elect you know in all but name at the moment so um, yeah I, th I think um, good times are ahead of us great and uh, just tell the viewers where can we find your uh, blog um, yeah so on Twitter I'm at Molyneux Musings um, on Facebook Musings from Molyneux and um, if you just google Musings from Molyneux you'll find my blog as well Lovely. thank you very much for watching don't forget to check out Gully's uh, blog don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you after the game for a review of it.